Hello. In this video, we're going to start the journey from the world of electronics to the world of logic. So far, we've created these two tables. We created this table when we looked at the behaviour of a single transistor, and it had the intuitive interpretation of being an inverter, because we got the opposite out of what we put in. We created this table when we looked at the behaviour of two transistors connected in series. The interpretation of this table is not obvious. To be able to properly interpret it, we must start to look at logic. Now, when we created these tables, we were measuring voltages, so we filled them in with values of low and high, depending on what we measured. In the more abstract world of logic, voltages don't really have a place. We need to use other values. And we're going to translate these values to naught and one. Now, if you have a look at what a table for an inverter might look like with values of 0 and 1, we get something like this. So we get out the opposite of what we put in, so 0 in, 1 out, 1 in, 0 out. And this is the symbol we'll use when drawing diagrams of a logic system. Now with just one input, this is the most exciting function that can be defined. When you have two inputs to a function, there are a lot of uh, possible functions that can be defined, but two are used more than most. Uh, they are the AND function and the OR function. So the AND function looks like this. We get a 1 out when the X and the Y are both 1. Otherwise, you get a 0. So AND function we get a 1 when x and y are 1. The OR function looks like this. And here we get a 1 being output when x is 1 or y is 1. So that's the OR function. So when I'm designing a logic system, uh, these are the two gates I use the most. And then I use an inversion every now and then to get the signals into the right sense to make things work. Now, each function we can define here has a complementary uh, version of it where we invert the outputs. So if we wanted to get the complementary version AND, it would be the NOT AND function, which we normally abbreviate to NAND. And that looks like this. So tables are the same, but the output column has been inverted. And we can do a similar thing with the OR, which will give us the NOT OR, normally abbreviated to the NOR function, and that looks like this. For completeness, there is a complementary version of the inverter, uh, which looks like this. And here we get out what we put in, which isn't hugely exciting. Um, when designing logic, this has no real value, but in the real world, it's sometimes helpful to have a buffer in place which lets you drive signals for a further distance or something like that. And you can get from this side to that side and that side to this side just by inverting the output. And you'll probably also notice the convention where a little circle means invert. We now have what we need to be able to interpret our table. If we were to translate low to zero and high to one, so low to zero, high to 1, we get the NAND function. So our two transistors arranged in series with that method of translation gives us the NAND function. It will be equally valid to translate low to 1 and high to 0, and that would produce us the NOR function. If you shuffle lines around a little bit, you'll get there. Uh, but most people, myself included, uh, find the translation from low to 0 and high to one to be the more intuitive um, one and easier to use. So that's the convention we're going to be using. Now, the other choice we made a while back was whether we arranged our transistors in series or in parallel. If we'd arranged them in parallel, we'd have created the NOR function. So we'll have a quick look at that, and then we'll have done everything that can be done with two transistors.